So you want to make some zip ties, but you don't know which is the best method. I got you. I'm going to go through three different ways of doing it, with the last, in my opinion, being the most interesting and the best. The first method is a technique that I use a lot, and is really great for blocking out various things from straps to flat cables. It's actually how I did the elastic bands and phone cable here on the phone asset I did for Rust. All you need are two curve objects, a bezier and a rectangle. So the concept to the first method is fairly straightforward. We're going to use the rectangle we've just created as a reference, and we're going to use it to define the port profile shape of our bezier curve. Now I just want to show you why we need to do it like this, because if we increase the profile of the bezier like so, and then reduce the resolution so it's rectangular, and then use the tilt function to rotate the shape 45 degrees, we can now then scale the profile down which looks fine until the moment you start moving it in the z-axis. There's a lot of distortion and so we don't really want to do it this way. Even zeroing out all the transforms to fix the scale issue doesn't work. It just resets it back to how it was originally. There is a better way and that is to define the shape of the profile by using our rectangle curve object instead. So to do this we first select our reference object and then shift select the bezier curve. Now when we enter into the hard ops menu, we see the curve bevel option available. Click it, and now the bezier inherits the profile of our reference object. This means that we can scale the reference without affecting the scale parameters of the bezier curve, allowing us to freely move, extrude, and rotate without any issue. So now that we've understood that method, you can sort of see how the first technique works. I'm going to speed up the process so you can see why it's not my go-to method of creating a zip tie, because there's a lot of fine tuning with the Bezier curve. It's great for creating a basic version, but it lacks the ability to add a lot of detail, and it's quite a destructive workflow. With this technique, I'm having to convert the curve into a mesh, which means I can no longer manipulate the curve but now allows me to fine tune it and add in any extra geometry so it's something more recognizable. Just something to consider if you're going to use this method. So that's the first method explained and practiced. Now let's go into the second method. This second technique is again pretty straightforward, but probably is the most restrictive. This is because unlike the first method, the length of the zip tie is predetermined before any manipulation and positioning takes place. So to make it all work, all you need is a zip tie model completely and entirely flat like this with enough subdivisions to enable it to deform properly. Secondly, a bezier curve approximately spanning the length of the zip tie. Now go over to the modify tab and add a curve modifier. Then pick your bezier curve. Your zip tie will probably jump around a bit, so it's best to move it so it's in line with the curve itself. That way you can manipulate it much easier. Now to begin with, you have to two points of manipulation, the start and end of the curve. But as you can see, there isn't enough resolution between the two points to give us the control that we need. So to resolve this issue, we select both vertices, right click, and then subdivide them. Now we have enough subdivisions to start positioning our zip tie in that circular shape. So two things to note with this technique. The first is that there is a bit of work involved to get the shape right. And secondly, you'll notice that when you move the verts around, sometimes you'll see the zip tie move along the path of the curve. Now this isn't getting longer or shorter here, nor is it stretching the geometry. It's just that when you pull the verts around, instead of stretching or getting longer, it'll move the entire model along the path of the curve. And this is why this method is the most restrictive, because what if you haven't modeled the zip tie long enough to wrap around your model? you're going to have to go back and make some major adjustments, which in this case, for a zip tie, might not be a lot of work. Oh, and a third thing. You may notice that it looks a bit faceted, especially on the flat areas of the geometry. Just increase the curve resolution higher so it's nice and smooth. And this concludes the second method of how to create a zip tie. Now onto the last method, my favorite. 
This time you're going to need four things, a bezier curve and three pieces of geometry. The first piece is the loop hold, the second is the body of the zip tie and the third is the feed end. Now this method essentially takes full advantage of the curve modifier by using not just the curve as a path for our zip tie to bend along but allows us to procedurally lengthen the zip tie without having to go back and do any major revisions to the mesh. Let's have a closer look at the geometry because we have to get a couple of things right first before we go any further. The first thing you need to understand with this method is that all three pieces need to fit together. The loop hold needs to connect to the bottom of the middle section and the feed end needs to do the same likewise but at the top. So it makes a complete zip tie. Think of it like making a modular building set. All this means is that every edge loop needs to be consistent and in the same place along the three meshes. I think a good idea would be to model the zip tie and then cut it up like I have done here. So to make this last method work, we need to select the main body of the zip tie and to add an array modifier, and to then set the fit type to fit curve and to pick our bezier as the reference. Now this is being arrayed along the X axis instead of the Y, so we'll need to swap those values over. And then all we have to do now is to rotate it and place it along our bezier. Now let's take a look at what's going on here. If we take the invert and move it along in the x-axis, we can see that our middle section of the zip tie is being repeated along the curve as it lengthens. It's increasing the array count to fit the curve, but the geometry isn't connected still. So let's enable merge in the array settings and reduce the amount to around 0.005. Now the cool part. If we go into caps, this is where we define the beginning and end of the zip tie. So to do that, use the picker tool for the cap start and select our loop hold. And it will jump straight into the beginning of our zip tie. And let's do the same for the cap end. Now when we select our bezier curve and then move the envert around, you'll see that the end piece will translate correctly along with the tileable middle section. We're almost there. Now all we need to do is to add a curve modifier to our middle section because currently if I were to move the curve handle in any other direction than the x-axis it will simply do nothing. It won't conform to the bend of the curve. So we once again select our bezier curve as a reference. Again you may have to adjust it a little bit but nevertheless we now have a procedural zip tie and we can begin to manipulate it in any way we want to. until we have it exactly how we want it. And there you go, three ways to make a zip tie. I hope you found this helpful. Peace.